He's our pastor. He is that which we know as Reverend John the Beloved. I know he will bring you a very exciting, interesting, fulfilling, stimulating, enriching, enrichment this morning. And so I invite you to put your hands together and welcome our pastor with our message this morning, Reverend John Scott. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> Morning, family. Morning, family overseas watching us on the World Wide Web. Morning, morning, morning. I'm just in that same love place that yesterday's royal wedding left me. I watched it, and I have to confess, I was one of the many who had moist eyes, including the groom. Uh, by the way, I have to tell you that no matter what your opinion is about the monarchy, they do what they do very, very well indeed. And I just thought how powerful values are in people's lives. You know, you know um, after the, the ceremony was over, there was a, a BBC America commentator, and he was you know, talking about the highlights of the, of the wedding. And he said, and, and, and that, um, stirring address by the bishop. It was almost a sermon. <laughs> Only the English. You know, it took me right back to my, my early days when I worked for BOAC in the, in the, the late 60s. Uh, I was on training in London at Heathrow Airport and we had spent two days um, talking about what to do when there was a delay. Now, the, the English never talk about safety. You know, if you talk about safety, it means that there's something wrong. So you know, you talk about the pluses and the, the advantages of you know um, all that is good. So we spent two days talking about what not to say. Uh, it was all around the business of when flights are delayed. Now, in the airline business, there is this kind of almost superstition that you know. If you have a plane load of people, you either have a plane load of really wonderful cooperative, it means docile and do what, what you tell them to do. Or if you have a delay and you, have, you only need one person to start the ball rolling, you know. And so the, 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 the trick was to get that one dissenting voice out of the way as quickly as possible and as far as way as, uh, away as possible from the other passengers. And you know how it is, we in, we in the Santa man know when you pay a lot of attention to something, what do you do? You attract it. So my dears, the first day of my orientation, observation on the British Overseas Airways Corporation counter at Heathrow Airport, what did we have? A massive delay. And so there was one dissenting voice and the supervisor said, T um, t take it away, John, um, you, you know and deal, deal, give her a lunch voucher, you know. And the lady was saying, I will never, ever, ever travel BOAC again. And under his, bre under his breath he said, do you promise, madam, do you really promise? <laughs> you know. So um, I had lots of learnings about how not to, um, to handle distressed people, you know. And she was a lady who was making a connection through New York to attend the wedding of her niece and was going to be late or miss the wedding because of this enormous delay. So I, yesterday's wedding took me right back to that. Um, and the whole business of how values affect us. But what friends are values? And why are they so powerful? An article in humanscience.wikia.com describes it like this, and I want to quote it for you. The power of values arises from the fact that they help us transcend ourselves. Values are what we consider valuable. Placing any ideal of perfection above our own personal convenience and interests expands our personality and opens it to wider and higher influences. The pursuit of higher values is the pursuit 
of spiritual truth. The expression of higher values is to bring truth into one's life. End of that quote. A value then is a belief or a philosophy that is meaningful to us. Whether we are consciously aware of them or not, every individual has a core set of personal values and they can range from the commonplace, such as the belief in hard work and punctuality, to the more psychological uh, values such as self-reliance, concern for others, and harmony of purpose. I came across a powerful story of how values can govern the very way we live our lives. Uh, it's a story titled, More Precious Than a Gem. A wise woman who was traveling in the mountains found a precious stone in a stream. The next day, she met another traveler who was hungry, and the wise woman opened her bag to share her food. But the hungry traveler saw the precious stone and asked the woman to give it to him. He immediately knew that this was a stone of great value and that if he had that stone, he would never hunger again. Without hesitation, the woman handed it to him and they parted, which, wishing each other the very best. He just knew that that stone was going to change his life. But a few days later, he retraced his steps, going back through the, through the mountains with the stone to find the wise woman. And just as he was about to give up his search, he, he, saw, he, he found her, he, he came across her. And he said, please take back the stone. I, I, I've been thinking about this and I, I, I want to give it back because I hope that you will give me something even more precious. And she said, well, what could that be? And he said, give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me the stone without hesitation. What do you think was his va her value? Love and a non-attachment to material things. And that love just, just poured out of her. She didn't hesitate to hand him something that she knew was of great value. She had found it, and she also let go of it without any sense of attachment to it. So the key point, my friends, to keep in mind about values is that implementing them energizes everything concerned with them. For an individual, committing to and applying values releases fresh energies which always attract success, achievement, and well-being. And so I think when a spiritual community like ours uh, identifies its core values and seeks to live them, everyone involved in the community becomes energized and motivated to work together in the achievement of our mission and goals. This is at the heart of our thriving ministry initiative. And we intend to energize our community by making a concerted effort to implement the values we say we subscribe to. Once we identify the core values that are meaningful to us, we will be working together to develop strategies to implement them, knowing that when we pool our consciousness around these values while being true to them, our center and its members will thrive and prosper. We will thrive and prosper individually and as a community. So this brings me to your assignment this week. And your assignment will be done on the spot this week. We're going to do a simple exercise which will give us a snapshot of what our collective values are as a spiritual community at this point in our evolution. If you attended our town hall gathering last July, you will have done this exercise, but let's do it again because our values may have shifted or changed since then, or you will be able to see if what you, you had then still applies in how you live your life right now. It's called What's on Your Card. And in your program, you will find two colored three by five cards. One of them, and it doesn't matter which one, on one of them, it doesn't matter which one. I want just, just choose one and write the names of three people whom you greatly admire. It, it can be someone living, it can be somebody that's passed on, it can be a fictitious character, somebody you've seen in the movies or on TV, it doesn't matter. Write the names of three people whom you admire. Write them on each one on a line and leave a little space. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yes. Three people you admire. Three people you admire. And if, uh, if you don't have a pen, bor borrow it from the one, somebody beside you. And as I say, it doesn't matter whether they are alive or they are on the other side or they are fictitious characters, just three people that you admire. Everybody can think of three people? What? <laughs> Write my name down then. Now, beside each of those names, I'd like you to jot down three characteristics, three attributes, three, three ways, you know, whatever, like the ways people have, three characteristics that would describe that person and that would be a clue as to why you admire them. Three personality traits, what kind of ways them have that make you admire them so much? See if you can find three for each name that you wrote down. I admire Reverend Michael because I'm full of vibes. You know. <laughs> That's not a characteristic. <laughs> You're going to have three names of people you admire, and beside each name, you're going to have three, three attributes or three traits, three characteristics. So you will have nine characteristics. You may have the same one for, for two or three, all three of your people that you admire. That's cool, too. Everybody have down three traits for each person that they admire? Um, just as a matter of interest, can I just hear some of the, of the attributes you came up with? Just call them out. Courage. Courage. Compassion. Compassion. Dedication. Generosity. Generosity. Loving. Integrity, generosity, selflessness, humility, faithfulness, brilliant, tenacity, consistent. Wow, these are some wonderful characteristics. Now here's what I want you to do. On the other colored card that you have, I don't want you to write the person's name. I want you to choose three of those characteristics that you identified on your, on, your, on your first card. The three that you most resonate with. And write those on this other colored card. You don't need to put your name just, or the person's name that you're thinking of. Just write the three characteristics that most resonate with you, that you feel strongest about. Maybe those are the ones you called out. Ah, so those are really strong for you, so write them on your other, on your other card. That happened when I did it too, Carol. Which means that's really a strong value for you. 
and may apply to all the people you admire. So, you've, you've transferred them to the three that are strongest for you, to, uh, to the other colored card, right? Now what we're going to do is, we're going to, when the love offering basket comes around during the singing of the joy song, in addition to dropping your love offering, we want you to drop that card in. Because we're going to collect them and look and see when we look at all of those that we've come up with, what are the strong core ones that crop up over and over and over again? Because that will give us a clue as to what really is a strong set of values for our community. Do you understand? Sorry? The second card that just has the three characteristics. Great. Good question, Karen. It's the second card that you've just written on the three characteristics that most appeal to you. You're going to turn those in for us, and that will give us a clue when we look at everybody's. Uh, I begin to have a look at what are the core values of our community. And the card you retain, the first card you wrote on, I want you perhaps to put it up on your fridge or somewhere where you can see it, because those, are, and put a little asterisk beside um, the three that you, you, you noted as being very strong for you, because that is what's on your card. And that is how you're going to evaluate yourself in terms of how you live your life and how you relate uh, to your temple family and to your, your family outside as well. How you live your life in terms of the values that you hold dear to your heart. Question, um, Claire? Mm -hmm. So we have, we have a little saying we say in the Thriving Ministry Initiative, what's on your card? And you'll be able to say, well, I had down love and uh, courage and tenacity or whatever it is because those are the ones that really drive you and you can always ask yourself whenever anything co crops up in your life am I on my card am I being faithful to the values that I say I espouse and that I live my life by so it's really true that the card you, that you retain can remind you that the attributes you identified as important represent the qualities that each of you desire to demonstrate and to embody as members of this community. You see, friends, you are only able to recognize these qualities in someone because you have the same capacity within you to express them. And this is the power of values. Living these qualities of being with intention enables that within you which is perfect which is God-ordained and God-fueled to emerge. So the second and perhaps the most challenging part of your assignment is to hold yourself accountable for the, th the three that you say you check for. On Saturday, June 9, as you have been told, you are invited to part two of our Thriving Ministry Initiative. And at this gathering, we will share the, the expectations of the various temple constituents which we generated in part one and identify the area of our community which we feel drawn to participate in and contribute to. We will start promptly at 10 and finish at 1 p.m. by sharing some delicious home-cooked Saturday soup. But I want to, to just say to you, Bring that card. You don't have to bring it physically, but bring with you what you say your values are. Because that's what you have to contribute, and that's, that, that's your gift to the world and to your spiritual family. I want to end by going back to Bishop Michael Curry's spicy encouragement at yesterday's wedding. It wasn't almost a sermon. It was a very moving encouragement. And I want to just look for a moment on that core value which Jesus, the master teacher, taught, the value of love. Curry quoted the late Martin Luther King Jr. who said, and I quote, we must discover the power of love, the power, the redemptive power of love. And when we do that, we will make of this whole world a new world. But love is the only way. There is power in love. Don't underestimate it. 
Don't even over-sentimentalize it. There is power, power in love. And then Bishop Curry waxed warmer as he declared, and I quote, someone once said that Jesus began the most revolutionary movement in human history, a moment grounded in the unconditional love of God for the world, and a moment mandating people to live and love, and in so doing, to change not only their lives, but the very life of the world itself. I'm talking about some power, real power, the power to change the world. Bishop Curry likened the transformative energy of love to the energy of fire. And I loved that. And Ernest Holmes, the founder of our great teaching known as the Science of Mind, also used this imagery. For in the Science of Mind textbook on page 478, paragraph 3, he writes, love is the central flame of the universe, nay, the very fire itself. So can we say together, love is the central flame of my life, the very fire itself. Love is the very central flame of my life, the very fire itself. To your neighbor say, love is the central flame of your life, namaste. Love is the central flame of your life, namaste. Love is the central flame of your life, namaste. You know, friends, it is this core value of love that calls us to work together to carry on the great work started by our beloved Reverend Emma Lumsden when she founded this church here in Jamaica. I'll never forget her saying that she was asked whether she thought Jamaica was ready for this teaching, and she said, I'm going to find out. Wow, you know, just imagine. Uh, a lady who has been studying nursing overseas and has had all of that, ex all of that exposure and that experience, and then having a vision that this is a teaching, a philosophy, a way of life, a value that can transform the lives of people, can, can touch people's lives into wholeness, can teach people the value of, of self-reliance and accountability, and that can instill in people a desire to change how they think, and in changing how they think, to change their very lives. What a powerful thing. Every week when I go to the, um, the General Penitentiary here in Kingston, it is foremost in my heart, because I think if only we can get across to just a few people, because when a few catch it, what do they do? They go out and they live it and they and they teach it by the way they, they live their lives. And I want you to know that that's happening, and that a lot, of, a lot of what we're doing in there, and we'll never know, just as Reverend Emma Lumsden never knew all the thousands and thousands of people whom she has touched because she started something with a vision of what could be to touch, to heal, to bless, to love, to prosper, and to liberate everyone with whom she came into contact. And that is the mission that we are living, and the value of love is at the foundation, is at the very core of this center's mission of light and love and joy. And so it is love that finds its expression in our Love in Action ministries, in the Ministry of the Environment. It is love that finds its expression in the Ministry of Hospitality. It is love that finds its expression in our music, in our peace ministry, in our youth ministry. It is love that meets as our board of trustees every month, and that it's love that keeps our admins and support staff at work way past regular office hours uh, when most people are on their way home. It is this love that decorates our sanctuary and sets out the chairs on a Sunday morning, Sunday after Sunday. It is this love that greets us through our ushers. It is this love that is fueling our program in the prisons. It is this love that will ensure the success of the Thriving Ministry Initiative as we seek to achieve our mission to touch, to heal. Say it with me, to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate anyone who comes into contact with us anytime, night or day. Namaste. Oh.